show me show me it where the bible says representing that god a created being can call, be called Yahweh. show me that in the bible anybody carrying the name of god is called god show me that in the bible where a created being can be called Yahweh. can you show me that in the bible what you're telling me is you want to add to the bible things that aren't there no, and no. i'm saying that the bible is saying that adding. jesus was that divine figure sitting on the throne that Yahweh. so deal with it That's why you don't grasp. He's called Messiah because he come to save all the souls. Right, but the Messiah men. was never... Messiah, Messiah means wife. <laughs> the, the reality is, the reality is, the church, the, the church today, the church does not exist. Anymore. But Jesus said he will guide his church. So well, now you're saying Jesus is a liar. I just, I, I go to the have a bit of fellowship, and I, and I hope that I hear a good message. So you go to churches with people who don't believe in the same God as you. <laughs> We are the partakers of divine nature. Peter says that. Peter says we are partakers of divine nature. But you are not the only one of the Father who is divine, which is even in scriptures. Hold on, hold on. The Father testifies of his beloved. This is my beloved son. Hear him. In many occasions in the scripture, God spoke about him. Even before coming into the world, that's the way God revealed of the divine son. And he said, he's the one shall be the covenant a light to the Gentile. That yeah. all nations should worship him, through him. Yeah, the father and when, the son through the father. When the father the in son. history, all the nation came to know about God of Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. yep. It's through Jesus Christ. Yep. Because Jesus Christ today is worshipped all around the world. And these people are worshipping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is in the book of Isaiah. Right. There's nothing to worship Jesus as God. Though. Well, you he would. Is, uh, no. One minute, bro. It says, it says in John 5, for he example, is. that you honour the Father the same way. No, you honour the yes. Son the same way as you honour the Father. And right. who does not. But how do you honour God? Yeah, who does who not have the Son does not have the Father. How do you honour God? One minute. How do you, how do you honour God? By listening to what Jesus says. But Why not just that, say? how else do you honour God? Remember the Old Testament. What does God say? Keep my commandments. Yeah. Pray to me. Yeah. Worship me. Yeah. Right? Jesus is saying those three things you do for me. John 5. Because he's the Messiah. Because he's the Messiah. Why would a created being answer? Remember, God says in the Old Testament oh, no, no, that there's no okay. God beside okay. me. Why would okay. a created all being. These things, uh, why would God okay. allow a created okay. being to be worshipped the so same way that the Father is worshipped? If all these things are because he's God. What's the, what, 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 are, what are, are, are his messianic attributes then? What are his messianic attributes? Hold on, hold on. What do you can mean I, messianic attributes? Can I, can I attributes? ask you? Can what, I what, ask what, you? What, what things can he do as the messiah? Why is he the messiah? What's the point because of being the messiah? Because he's the tone, the sins of all mankind. Yeah, no, that's that's why he is the messiah. The messiah means Yeshua, in, uh, in Hebrew, means the saviour. Right. Yes. He's but the also means... Hold on, hold on. He is the saviour of the souls of all men. Yeah. That's why he says, uh, uh, no one goes to the Father except through Him, yeah. because yes. Him, he's He the laid, Messiah. Yeah, and he's the, he's the way of the Messiah truth and life. The only way to the Father is the Savior of the souls of all men. That's yeah. why you don't grasp. He's called Messiah because He come to save all the souls right, but of the Messiah men. Was never... Messiah, Messiah means wife. <laughs> <laughs> the Messiah, wife the Messiah was never supposed to be God Almighty. Never, never, no. never supposed no. to be God That's Almighty. That's why Jesus, okay, according to who? when He asked according the, to the Jews, Jews. Hold on, no, what no, Jews? No, 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 hold on. What the Talmudic Jews hold, believe hold in like 380? I don't care what Let me answer. What all the Jews? That's why Jesus. Hold on. Yeah, no one believed He was the Messiah. Hold on. Sorry, nobody believed He was God. Yes, they did. Just hold on. Hold on. That's why Jesus asked the Jews, says, who do you say that Messiah is? And they say, he said, the son of David. Then he says, why David call him Lord? If he is the son of David, one, the Lord, one David call him Lord. Yeah, it's right? in Psalm 108. If, if you look in the old scripture, it says the Lord is God. Yeah. The Lord is God. Jesus was so, made Lord. So Jesus was made Lord. Hold on. What? Yeah, in lieu of his reincarnation. In lieu of his reincarnation. It doesn't, it doesn't, because again, he incarnated and he was made Lord after his incarnation. Because as I said, he was made lower than the angels, Philippians 2, 6 to 11. You have to understand before... So of course he's made Lord. There is an existence, there is a pre-existence of Christ before creation. There's no pre-existence. Yes, there yes, is. is. Yes, there is. Okay, let me... Sh should I give you the scripture for you to read? Are you going to give me John 1? No, I'm going to give you the Old Testament. Yeah, Go Old on. Testament. I'm not going to give you the New Testament. Go on. I'll give you the Old Testament. Let me take my, my glasses. 
That's why Jesus, when Jesus was making the statement before Abraham he, 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 was, was I am, I am yeah, he's Hickory. talking about his pre existence. Like, yes, 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 there he is. And God said, he's, talk, he's, he's talking about the vision, the, the, the vision of, the, of Abraham that Abraham saw that the, the Messiah was the promise that was how the Messiah was going to come. What do you mean the a world? vision? It says, in, it says in Genesis 18 that Abraham saw his God, his God came down and ate. So, if you read, this is talk about the creation. When you go into uh, Book of Proverbs 30, Proverbs 30 from verse 4, I think. No, no. I think you should go before that, though. Yeah, yeah, it's before that, sorry. Because remember, we've got, we've got, we've got, actually, for example, we've got the angel, of the, the angel of the Lord, for example. In Exodus 3.14, the angel of the Lord is in a burning bush, right? Mm -hmm. Hear me that carefully. That was an angel. Yeah, you believe that was an angel, but the problem is, it the says, says it was says God. It was an angel. No, no, it says it was God. The Bible said it was. He an gives angel. him the divine name, the, the Yahweh. Bible says it was an angel. The Yahweh is the only, the only name used for Yahweh is for God. Yahweh, no, no. God. Anybody carrying? No, the no, name, hold on. Anybody representing God? Show me, show me where only, the Bible says representing that God a created being can call, be called Yahweh. Show me that in the Bible. Anybody carrying the name of God is called God. Show me that in the Bible where a created being can be called Yahweh. Can you show me that in the Bible? The fact that the angel of the Lord was called God. What do you mean about the angel of the Lord is called God? Go, yeah, but you're assuming that is a created angel. But I'm not saying that. The Bible's not saying that. The Bible, the Bible says that, that the Bible God was said, in that bush. In the, in, the, in the book of Acts, it says the angel, it was says the person, the, the person or the thing that came in through the burning bush, even though it says it was God, it says it was he was an angel. An angel. Right, but angel just means messenger in the Hebrew. Right, right. okay. Messenger doesn't mean that his nature or his divine nature is interrupted. That doesn't mean he's human or created. Right, you're assuming that. But let me, let me, let's read this. Let's, okay. you, you, right, don't let, let's, 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 you don't understand the Hebrew. Because we're getting confused now, that's what I mean. We're getting, we're getting confused. Second. This is the thing, you're, you're talking through a very westernized... That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> we're getting confused. Yeah, very because there's two of us. You try to as me in that way, but it's not. You're, you're looking through I'm a very westernized lens. What westernized lens? You're western yourself. I'm western, but I don't look... When I try to understand the... The, the God of the God of Israel. I look at the, I look at it in terms of how the Hebrews thought. What yeah. do you mean how the Hebrews thought? Matthew was a Hebrew and he interpreted Jesus as God. No. Yes, he did. Matthew twenty eight nineteen. Jesus was given authority over heavens and the earth. Who given, has authority? Given, given. Who has authority over heavens and the earth? The Messiah. Look. No God. You didn't answer the question. So, okay, hang on a second. You keep on saying uh, he did this because he was God. He had this because he was God. He had. The, so, what is the point of the Messiah? Are you saying you're saying to save people? Okay, yes. to save people. How can he save people if he's not given these divine attributes? And I, I, I want to go through yeah, Matthew let's, and explain let's why Jesus is calling to Matthew. But let, let let's me give you. A, 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 so I, I just wait for you lot to hurry up. That's talking about wisdom, 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 not Jesus. Hold on, it's Jesus. Okay. That's talking about wisdom. Let's not me Jesus. give you. Is wisdom now. a person? Wisdom is it? Wisdom is personified as a sheep. So it can't be Jesus. Uh, according to who? So now, how can wisdom, here, if wisdom is a sheet, how can it be Jesus? It, it could be a type, just like Abraham is can a type he, of, Jesus, of Jesus. Right, but it's not, is it? Let me, no, give, let me give you this. It's not Jesus, but Abraham is a type of Jesus. That doesn't mean the same person. Hold on, okay, hold but, it's, but it's not Jesus. Okay. That's wisdom. Yeah, but it's a type. Can That's what I'm trying to say. Typology. To, I'm saying. giving you a parallel. Here in this scripture, it was des describing creation. Now here, the Father is testifying about him. What does he say? If this is in the in in psalm, psalm 2, from verse 10. What does it say? Now, therefore, be wise. So it's calling people to the wisdom, calling those who are a, 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 a head of nations. It says, O oh, kings, be instructed, O oh, judge of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in your way. When his right is kindled, by little bless all those who put their trust in him. The right. father is speaking, okay. yes. but he's not talking about himself. He's yes. talking but about he the son. Him by the because son. Because and then instructing. Because. Hold on. I'm, I'm just going to finish. And he instructing people, the king, who supposed to govern the nations of God, calling them to be instructed to fear the Lord and to serve yeah, to yes. serve the son yes. that's why that's yes. why so what, who's the son in that, that passage that's why that's, that's why when you see all you believe it's a prophecy of Jesus yes, yes. right so why, so why do you think that, that he should be revered in that way I'm just going to conclude I'm just because gonna he's conclude. the Messiah what do you mean just because he's he's God's chosen one. God but that's the quality of God son, is a divine Jesus son says there's, the God says there's no other gods beside me Right, okay. And there's no other saviors beside me. That's so what you serve God, God. And you serve them side. So, if, so serve no, hold on. If God says in the Old Testament there's no other saviors beside me, who is Jesus claimed to be? But it also says there's many saviors. The Bible says, it says there's many saviors. I'll, I'll, I'll have to go to Google because I can't remember the verse. You can't remember the verse. There are many saviors. It says that. All right then. There are many. 
You're gonna have to get the verse up because I died. I literally don't know. Oh, sorry, one minute. So my phone's freezing out now because it's raining. Yeah. Look, they're, they're, that's what I mean. Like, I've typed it in, it doesn't say that. And plus, the phone's wet, so it's going to start messing about. But let, let, anyway, let, like, there are many savers. I don't know what that passage is. You're going to have to get off. But basically, let, let, let's go through Matthew because I, I want to show you something. But Job was declared righteous. It's not righteous in the sense of being. It's not righteous in the sinless sense. God. Because Jesus obviously sinless. Because that's what Peter sin, says. The nature of man became sinful. Yes, I know. Because of the knowledge of God was following Jesus. So do you believe that men could be worshipped? Is that what you're telling me? As, 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 as someone who's representing God, yes. D does the Bible say that men could be worshipped? Yeah, David was worshipped. Worshipped in the same way as God? Because remember, latria is The Greek word latria is, is, a, is, is a title yeah, used for worshipping God alone. He was worshipped in, 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 in the sense that he was, he was uh, uh, in a secondary sense. In a secondary sense yeah. as a divine king. But that's yeah. not what the, the Matthew is saying, and that's not, that's not what John said. No, it isn't. John, saying, do you, John used the word latria instead of dulia. Dulia in the Greek is, is somebody like who would bow before somebody just in a regal sense. For example, if you're a king, I would bow before you in a regal sense, and that would be Dulia. But Latria is, is, the, the, is the divine sense of, of bowing for and worshiping God. That's why Jesus says this, and I, 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 I want you to really understand this. Sorry. Um, let's just take you through a few verses. This one's this one's important, right? Matthew 9 15, right? And Jesus said to him, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and they will they will fast. Right? So why does Jesus refer himself as the bridegroom? Again, because he's the Messiah, chosen to be chosen to lead. Uh, no. Chosen to lead. Who, who, who is he speaking to in context? Who is he speaking to? The disciples. Yeah, who are the disciples? What, what nationality are they? Israelites. They're Israelites, right. So what does God say about Israel? This is, this is what God says about Israel. He says this in Isaiah 54, 5, 4. For your maker is your bridegroom. Yeah. Right. So if, if the maker of God is a bridegroom, and Jesus himself is referring to himself as a bridegroom, right? Jesus is referring to himself as God. In the Old he's the image of God. He's the one lead, the chosen. No, but we're in the image of God, so that doesn't make any sense. Well, you're saying that we're God, we should be worshipped the same way and we can call ourselves the bridegroom. No. Of course we can't, because that's a divine title. Israel is there to stay. I think just because it's a... But we're divine as well. Take my word for it. Not in the same way, no. Of course we are. We're divine in lieu of the Holy Spirit within us. And when I mean us, I don't mean you. That's why Jesus was divine. Because of the Holy Spirit inside us. Not necessarily, no. Because Jesus came to be pre No, he didn't. Yes, he does. All right, so let me show you this. All right. Right, so Jesus, Jesus himself, yeah, in Matthew 16, 27, he says this, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Mm. You understand that that verse is thrown to Daniel 7, 13, 14, right? Okay. Right, so the Son of Man in Daniel 17, 14, 7, 13, 14, there's, there's, a, there's an array of thrones brought down by the angels, right? There's two of them, right? Or it, well, it says thrones, but there's multiple thrones, right? The Son of Man is taken up to that throne. Who's he speaking about? The throne, the throne that he's on, he's referring to is the God's throne. Yeah, but the thrones are, it's not, not throne, thrones are referred to in Daniel 7, okay. 7, 13, 14. There's two thrones. And the Son of Man goes up to the Ancient of Days. If, yeah. you, read, if you read Daniel 7, 13, 14, the Son of Man goes up to the Ancient of, the Ancient of Days, right? And he sits right beside him, right? So he's already pre-existent. Well, what do you mean it actually happened? What do you mean it doesn't mean that actually happened? It doesn't actually happen. you, like, So example, when Jesus says, I go to my God, your God, I go to my God, your God, my Father, your Father, what, what does he mean by that? Where's he going? He's going to sit with, on the right hand side of God. He's going to sit on the right side, right side of God, yeah. right? Just like the Son of Man did in Daniel 7, 13, 14. Like a prophecy. But the, but the Son of Man in Daniel 17, 7, 13, 14, right? The Son of Man has to be equal with God because he's sitting on the throne next to God. Yeah, but we know that, you know, that, that Daniel also talks about, he said, he saw like the one like the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. But then we know that hasn't happened. Yet. But he saw in a vision that I was... Yeah, that, that's talking about the, apo the apocalypse, right? Okay, but, that, but it, it didn't but happen. But hold on, hold on. It did happen. Because again, after Jesus rises, in Acts, in Acts, Jesus rises. After that, then Jesus goes to the Father, as he says he would. 
but he, no, unless you think he was lying. He's on about he's on about come, seeing him coming riding on the clouds. On the clouds of heaven. Right, but what does Jesus do when he goes up? He's taken up by a cloud. In Acts, in Acts 1, he's taken up by a cloud. And he's taken up to the ancient yeah, of death. That's not him coming in the clouds, is it? Coming here in the clouds. Are you talking about, no, you're talking about returning. I'm saying, I'm, I'm talking about him going back to the okay, father's position. Okay, but I'm position. not about him returning. And that's but what that doesn't The vote. point I'm trying to make is that that's, that nature of divinity, so the, the sharing of the thrones, is, is basically Jesus saying that I am equal, in a sense, to the father. Because they share the same thrones. And you, you just told me that, that we've Daniel 7, 7, 13 to 14, right, is talking about Jesus Christ. So if it is, then the thrones, the thrones, yeah, are shared equally by the Father and the Son. Of course you. What do you mean no? It's just a prophecy. What do you mean it's just a prophecy? It's just love. It's just but Jesus says that I go to my Father, your Father, my God, your God. And he also says in Matthew 28, 19, right, that he has been given authority over heavens and the earth. Right, but who has authority over the heavens and the earth? The Messiah. Oh, who has? Well, you not hear what I'm saying? God has. God has. But he gives the Messiah that role. Why, why, why would the same God? Remember, God doesn't change. So why would the same God who says there's no, there's no Savior beside me, and there's no, there's no person worthy of worship beside me, why would he then give a created being thrones and the, the, the ability? To have control over the heavens and the earth. Tell Daniel that because Daniel says that he was given dominion. And I don't need to tell Daniel anything. Daniel says, he agrees with what I believe. Daniel says he was given dominion and thrones and and authority and 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 to be worshipped not as a as, as as a as a, as a messiah. We worship. Um, uh, that, you know that verse. Don't you? So again. He was, he was given dominion and power and authority. Dominion, power, glory, and authority. Yes. He was given. He didn't have it in the first. So but as I said before, yeah. Philippians 2, 6 to 11 says Jesus made Lord the angels. Now imagine, right? Let, let's look at it in a rank status, right? Let's say you've got a job. You're a manager, right? And let's say, like, let, no, let's say you're a co-manager, right? You're a co-manager and I'm the CEO, right? I make you lower than a staff position. So now you're a janitor, right? That means you do not have the same positions that you had once before. That means you do not have access to the same roles that you had before. For example, a manager can access the, the, um, the manager's room. You can't because you're a janitor now. But you used to be. You still know how to. But in lieu of the fact that you are now in a, in a low position and are a janitor, you cannot access to the same things. What happens there is Jesus Christ made himself low in the angels. And you have to wrestle with that because why is Jesus Christ saying, I made myself low in the angels? He never said I made myself low in the angels. Yes, he did. He said he was made low in the angels. He, he never said I was made low in the angels. Oh, man. But this is from the strong, this is a strong definition. Morphe, or mor Morphe, perhaps on the base, uh, base of G313. Sorry, that's one of them. Through the idea of adjustment of parts, shape, figuratively, nature, form. Right. So it can be used as a nature and a form. So this verse is clearly saying that Jesus was in force not robbery to be in a form or the nature of God. They call the United you understand what I'm saying? Morphe means that he was in the nature of God. I mean, yeah, because he was in the image of God. What do you mean? The image of God is No, no, God has his own nature. You do not understand what I mean. No, but, but, but if you're in the image of God, you're given the same nature as God. Uh, no, we're not given the same nature as God. Okay, are you omnipotent, omnibenevolent, omniscient? Are you all those things? Uh, Omniscient, omnibenevolent, omnipotent. Are you those things? Can, do you know all things? Do you have all universal knowledge? No. You don't have it. So then you're not in the nature of God. You can have it. You can have it. If you're given that, if you if you're given that divine nature by God, you can't have the divine nature of your creator being. No, you can't. No, you can't. The Bible doesn't say you can have the divine nature of a human being. You can partake in it, but you can't have it. If, if you're partaking in it, then you are part divine. No, 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 you're not part divine. It doesn't work like that. No, because, no, no, because again, as, what it means is that, what it means by partaking, bro, is that the Holy Spirit, oh, if you want to go over here, the Holy Spirit that is within you, right? You are, you are partaking of the Holy Spirit. So, like, for example, it says in John 3, for example, right? That Jesus was Jesus was given the fullness of the Spirit, right? But some of the, some of us are not given the Spirit out of measure. So some of us, some of us are given the Spirit by measure. For example, God wouldn't give the Holy Spirit in its fullness to a man who, let's say, who's sitting around doing nothing, because what is what's that going to do? You get what I'm saying? Why, why, why would you? Have, why why would God give you the ability to do tongues, to raise the dead, and to to give life and all this stuff? 
if you yourself are not able to do, if you yourself are in a position where you're not going to do it anyway, it doesn't make any sense. But Jesus, and Jesus, who has the form of God within himself, has the ability to do already do these things. See what I'm, see what I'm coming from? No, God didn't show him how to do it. But again, if you're going to use the argument that God showed him how to do it, then it must mean, therefore, he had the ability to do it already. Because if I show you how to do something... God gave him the ability and then showed him how to use it. It doesn't say God gave him the ability. It doesn't need to. It does. If you're going to claim that a verse says God gave him the ability to raise the dead, to give life, yeah, he was given all authority, right? In lieu of his human nature, as I said before, he was in the he was in the form of God, and the form morphe, the form is the nature. You can't deny it now. So, so you he don't was, believe that we're divine. I don't believe you're divine, no, because it makes no sense. So you don't believe Adam was the image of God? I believe he was the image of God in the sense of his consciousness, his will. You can't, be, you can't be the image of God and not be divine. Yes, you can you be can't. the image of God, and not be divine. For example, the word the words in, in Greek is used that you used. The let, let me finish. The word in Greek that's used. For the for the um, image of God in Genesis um, two, yeah, used for Adam is character, right? Character is not the same word morphe. Character is is not a mirror image. Just like it says in Hebrews one three, for example, if you read Hebrews one week, Jesus is the express image of God, the mirror image. We're not the mirror image. We're the character. We're like we're like the picture. We're not the we're not the image. We're not the exact imprint. You see where I'm coming from? So why was God? has an imprint, he has an essence, he has a nature. We are not that nature. We cannot share or we can partake of that nature via the Holy Spirit, but we are not that nature because the word character refers to that image, the created image. Not, in, not the word, the word morphe refers to that the equality between those images. Do you see what I'm coming from? The predication is the equality between those images. There's a difference between words. That's why it's important to get into the Greek, because the Greek, the Greek is very far when it talks about Jesus, and it and it clearly says. In, well, I don't know. What, I don't know what happened to me because I had an experience where I what, where I realised I was one with everything I before, and 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 I was that love that I was seeking for. I was that love, joy, peace that I was seeking for. And I, the Bible says God is love. But yeah, God I, is love. But I but I was that love. Um, no, you're not that love. Again, God is the source of all love. Do you agree with that? Of course. Of course he is. But if you're, if that, if that, if God is in you and you're identifying with that nature, then that becomes you. Um, in, in lieu of essence, so you're talking, if, if we're talking about essence, no, you cannot become God's essence in the same way that God is. Because these, these are what, these are what, um, I think there's, I had a book on it as well. But this is what is called communicable attributes. Do you know what I mean by communicable? Go on. Communicable means that there are attributes that God has that we can share with. Not in the same way, obviously. God is this holy other and he's divine. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Right. But there are attributes that he has that we can have. For example, love is an attribute. Mm. Love is transactional. That comes from the, that image of God or that image of deity. Yeah. That doesn't mean we share in the deity. Remember, the deity itself is, is holy other. It's omnipotent. It's omnis in, omniscient. You are not omniscient. You cannot create a new world. You cannot create a new universe. I can't do that either. But what, what he's saying here is that in Philippians 2, 6 to 11, is that, God, that Jesus himself was in that form. So he was able to do those things. He was able to create a world. And it makes sense in the context, even before Philippians is even written. Well, not before Philippians is written. But even before that, in John's mind, when he's writing, John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. It is, well, Jesus. It is. It's about, it's about the word of God, not Jesus. Jesus is the word of God. He became flesh. Jesus is the word of God. Then explain to me how God put Jesus into Jesus' mouth. In, according, to, according to Deuteronomy 18, 18. Right, you're, you're confusing the, the, the term logos, which is the word that's used in the Greek, with the, with the term used for his words. Right. No, God, God, for example, that, that he puts his words in Isaiah, for example. That doesn't mean that Isaiah is the word of God. Or that Jesus was in the word, the mouth of Isaiah. No. What that means is that Jesus will be in conformity of what um, of what God says. But the word logos, the word logos is that reason, and that's what that's why John uses it. He uses Greek thought to to interpret it as this logos, this reason, this wisdom within the mind of God. That's what it is, the wisdom and the knowledge. But, the of God. but again, when we think of God, we don't think of a well, is a person. Because in the Greek it says proston, per, proston patero. Proston patero, in the Greek, in John, in John 1, 1, 1b, right? It says God with the word, or the word with God, right? The word with God, that, that pros, right, is, is, a, is a 
it's not connection, but it's a it's a personal word. So pros is a personal word. So it's the, the the term used or the predicate used is personal. That means that person has to be that 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 you object deal, or that subject deal, has to be a word. Do you get what I'm saying? You have to deal with three King James uh, translations then, because according to them, I'm talking about the Greek. I'm th this is the Greek. This is this is literally what the Greeks would have, how, would they, how they would interpret it. Well, yeah, but the Greeks never interpreted. The Greeks never, never thought of the, the, the word as a person. They gave us most of our Old and New Testaments. And they never thought that the word was a person. But do you mean they didn't think the word was a person? It says post on patera. What? Pros is a personal word. What, him? Yeah, no, with. With. What God, was, what God, was God with the word. With yeah, God, okay, the word. So the word is with God. That means there are two parties. Yeah. Pros, Tom, Patera. Well, that doesn't mean it's two parties. It means... It does mean God's two parties. thoughts, God's plans, God's wisdom was with God inside of you. Um, no, it doesn't. For but, but I didn't... Notice what I didn't do. I didn't leave the actual the actual subject of the verse. I didn't leave the verse. You did. You left, you left John 1. I didn't leave John 1. I stayed where it was. All I did was go to Greek. And pros means a with that is referring to a person. It has to. So you're, 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 very, very, you're very, very, being very carnal. Uh, dude, I, I, all I have to do, right? All I have to do is bring up the interlinear. I won't even use my own verse. You always have to mean with, literally with, as in standing alongside. I'll, I'll bring up the verse and then we can go through it. Look, right, look, look, look. I've got the interlinear on my phone, right? Interlinear. Doesn't it say his plans and his thoughts and everything are with him? Say it again. Doesn't it say my thoughts are with me? Your thoughts are with you, whoever? You're going to have to get that verse up because I don't, I don't know what verse you're talking about. But let, let's let's read this, all right? All right, this is what it says, right? This is whole logos, n pros, pros with, all right? Let's go to the with. Okay, so this is what it says. At nearby, towards, with regard to. So it, it means that this person is close. It says here, strength and form, a proposition of direction, forward, to, toward, the side of, pertaining with the dative case, by the side of, near to, usually with the accusative case, the place, time, occasion or respect, which is the destination of the relation. This is basically saying that the pros used with God, the word with God, is referring to a person or a person being with a person. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that at all. It's, all right, let me read it again. Near to, usually with the accusative yeah, okay. case, the place, time, and occasional respect. Okay, it doesn't say with, it doesn't, that a person is with them. Which is the destination of the relation. What, what's the relation, bro? The word was with God. Yeah, the God is, God the, is So the relation is the word, right? Yeah, God is in relation with his word, yeah. Right, no, word. no, the, the word is with relational. Yeah. The word is relational, right? Okay. But it's saying it's in the, the, the place, time, occasion, or respect of the, of the place of the word. It's not saying it's a, it's a pre-planned mental God state. God was, God was one with his word before. Yeah, so I know, I know that. No, but we don't agree that God was... I'm not saying that God wasn't one. What I'm saying is this. This says that the word was with him in a time. A destination, that's what it's saying. In relation to a destination, the word was with God. Okay, let's go a little bit further. It says everything was made by the word, right? Yeah, that's our problem. Okay, but if you look at the, throughout the Old Testament, it's very clear what it means by that. It means, it says, it says in many verses, it says, God made the world by his wisdom and his knowledge and his understanding. It doesn't say he made the world by another person in the world. But hold on, you're, you're confusing two things. For, for, for starters, right? God can make the world through his wisdom and his understanding more, and that wisdom still being a person. That's not a problem for us. He's not, he's, not, he's not a person. He is a person. And that person. Okay. So if that, if, that, if, that, if, that, if that wisdom is a person, if that wisdom and knowledge is a person, then you have to deal with that wisdom and knowledge resting on, on another person who is, who is supposed to be Jesus in, in Isaiah. Isaiah. You know, where it says. Uh, um, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of the might and the fear of the Lord. I'm not. Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. We don't have the problem with the spirit of the Lord being upon people. All right, but that. But I'm saying that because I believe the, the spirit of the Lord is another member of Trinity. Okay, and we can get I'm, into that if you want I'm to. The spirit of the Lord gives I'm life. I'm saying the, the spirit. I'm saying the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding comes from the spirit of the Lord. Not yeah, from, I, we not, don't agree with that. Not from another person. The, I, I don't deny the spirit, the, the wisdom and divine. Okay, knowledge. but that's what the word is talking about in that. No, it isn't because the word logos well, used here. In the, no? in the New Testament, Paul says, Paul says that the, the sword, the sword of the 
of spirit is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word. Yeah, but there are two senses of there are two different senses of the word of God. For example, when God says he speaks, he puts his word in certain people's mouths, that doesn't mean that it's, it's Jesus is putting into people's mouths. As I just said before. But that's what the word is. That's what the word no, is. No, in identified. the Greek the word is logos. And logos means this. Of speech, a word uttered by a living voice embodies a conception. That's one that's one way of interpreting it, but let's continue. What someone has said, a word, the sayings of God, the creed mandate order of the moral precepts given by God, Old Testament prophecy given to prophets, yeah. Yeah. what is declared, a, a full declaration of aphorism. I'm just reading out all the, all, the, all the ones that actually say that, yeah? A weighty saying, a dictum and maxim, this course that the speaking speech, the faculty of speech, skill and practice in speaking, a kind or style of speaking, a continuous speaking, doctrine, teaching, anything reported in speech, matter under discussion, anything spoken of, the thing spoken of or talked about, it is used as respect to the mind alone, so it can be used as respect to the mind alone, you didn't realise. It can be used as, it, I've got to speak slowly. It's used as respect to the mind alone. Okay, yeah, right. Reasoning, as I said before, the, re the very reason of God. Right? The mental faculty of thinking. Bro, could, this is what I mean, every time I film it. Right? You still have a... Reason, the mental faculty of thinking, meditating, reasoning, and as, yeah. as I said before, Jesus is the reason of God, the divine okay, reason. None, none of that is... is okay, so this, is, this, that is, this is what the Greeks, this is what the Greeks, this is what the Greeks refer to as John. Right? All right. In John, denotes the essential word of God, Jesus Christ. The personal wisdom and the power and the union of, of with God, his minister in creation and government of the universe. The cause of all the world's life, both physical and ethical, which for the procurement of man's salvation, one minute, puts on human nature in the person of Jesus the Messiah, the second person in the Godhead, and show forth conspicuously from his words and deeds. Right. So when John uses it here, he's referring to that word of God, Jesus, the personal wisdom and the power we're in the union with God. So that is a person. That's what the, the interpretation is. No, you're arguing with the Greeks. This is what the Greeks, these are the Greeks have interpreted. This is the interlinear. That's because they're, that's because they're Trinitarian bites. What do you mean Trinitarian bites? Well, you're telling me that for hundreds, you're telling me for thousands of years, remember, because your church was in existence thousands of years ago. So you're so telling me for thousands the, of years. The church right? I believe in, the church that I believed in, the first century church. Right, but, but, but what does Jesus say? Jesus says he himself will, will no, he says the spirit will, will guard the, the church. So the spirit will guard the church. Why would they go off into error within the first century? He guided the Jerusalem church. So you, hold on, but he didn't just say the Jerusalem church. He said he will guide the church. He didn't say Jerusalem church, he said the church. So it says specifically that the spirit will guide the church. Right. So, so if the spirit guides the church, what what's going on? Why are they, why, is this, why do you think there's so much heresy in regards to Trinitarian heresy? Because we've got Saint Justin Martyr, we've got Athenagoras, right in the second century, we've got Clement of Rome claiming that Jesus is God. So where did they get this idea from? I remember the Didoc case says this. It. It, it, it was when Greek thought came into in, came into um, came into the church. But what do you before, mean Greek thought? John was before right. Then, before John, then, the, Jew, the, Jew, the, Jew, the Jewish the Jewish Christians, which were the first followers of Jesus, they did not see Jesus as God or the divine word of God. They disagreed. Uh, according to, if if if, if, history, if they if, if the church history. if the church that Irenaeus was in, right, the church that Irenaeus was in has the traditions that that church had. I remember this is only a hundred years old. Let, let, let's, let's give you like 100 years. Let's, let's give you Clement, for example. Clement himself claims that there's a trinity, that, that God is a trinity. He wants to read it out for you. Okay, so... Uh, um. Okay, so this is... Uh. Oh, no, no. I mean, I mean, let, let, let me finish. I'm, 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 the reality is... The reality is the church, the church is dead. The church does not exist anymore. But Jesus said he will guide his church. So well, now you're saying Jesus is a liar. Well, it has, where is the church then? It's, it's nowhere to be found. But hold, let me just read this first, and then you can, because then we'll have to get into the history of the church, and we have to get into the Reformation. The only, the only real church that, that has existed anymore is the Catholic Church, and we know that it's real. Um, no, that's not the only real church that existed. There, there's the Eastern Orthodox Church, there's the there's okay, Syriac Coptic Church. They churches. came out a lot later than when... when um, no, they didn't. That, that's an assumption. Can you show me, like, for example, the, the Coptic Church, for example, they date back to Mark. They, they claim that Mark created their church. Right, so, but anyway, let's go back to the Trinitarian thing, right? Ignatius says this, all right? And if you, if you believe that Jesus Christ guides the church according to the, the Bible, right? Then you have to believe what Ignatius says, or at least understand that Ignatius is speaking from the same tradition, all right? Ignatius, AD 30 to 107. Since also there is but one unbegotten being, God, even the Father, and one only begotten Son, God, the Word and Man, and one Comforter, 
the spirit of truth and also one preaching and one faith and one baptism the epistle yeah that's the epistle of, Na of ignatius Philipp philadelphians chapter four but the holy spirit does not speak his own things but those of christ and that not from himself so the holy spirit speaks from christ by the way which is important if you're going to understand the trinity and that not from himself but from the lord even as the lord also announced announced to us the things that he received from the father for he says the word which you hear is not mine but the father's who sent me and he says he of the holy spirit he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever things he shall hear from me and he says of himself to the father i have says i have says he glorified thee upon the earth and i finished the work which thou gavest me i have manifested first thy name to men and the holy ghost he shall glorify me for he receives of mine so this is for example this, this verse is what, what ignatius is saying here is basically like all things the father has all things the spirits has are his Right. Son, let's go on. Just because the church father says something doesn't mean it's true. But hold on, hold on. Well, if if, if we're let gonna let me give an example. Let me give an example. Go on, go on. The most prominent, the most prominent church father. What's his name again? Uh, There's many of them, right? Saint Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, Clement of Rome, Clement of Alexandria, Saint Cyprian. Second century. Second century. Um, Irenaeus is second century. Um, I think Clement, no, no, Clement is the secretary. St. Justin Mar is second secretary. Uh, I mean, I don't know who you're talking about. Um, are you talking about Athenagoras? Oh, you're are you talking about Origin? Origin, that's I it. think, yeah, you're, you're bringing up Origin. The problem right. is, like, Origin is like one take out of many. Okay. And he, but he, he was the most prominent church father. He wasn't the most prominent. Of course he was. No, he wasn't the most prominent. And he was declared a heretic by the church for being believing in reincarnation. Yeah, that's because he believed in false doctrine, but he wasn't the most prominent. You're, you're why, assuming would, why would a church father come out and say that? We don't, hold on, we don't believe that, I, as, as a, a Christian, first of all, I'm Protestant Christian, I'm not a Catholic, so I don't believe the church fathers are infallible. They get things wrong, I'm not saying anything. So how do but, you know that... What, the, because we're looking at the consensus patrum, or the consensus of the fathers. What are they saying in their consensus? Origen did believe in a trinity. Mm -hmm. Right, and so did St. Justin Martyr, so did, so, so did Athenagoras, so did Irenaeus, so did Augustine, so did Athanasius, if you go later. So the Clement of Alexander, so the Clement of uh, Jerusalem. Yeah, these, remember, these, we, these were Greek believing, believing um, uh, Christians that, were, that formed the church. That doesn't mean it was the right church. What do you mean it wasn't right? What, the right so you're telling me that Jesus was wrong and the church went off no, the church, after the first Jesus century? Jesus went on and, and guided the Jewish church. The Jewish church. What do you mean he guided the Jewish church? What did Jesus say at the end of the New Testament? Uh, no, at the end of Matthew. He says, therefore go and baptise them in the name of the Father and of the Son and, all, uh, and, and the Holy Spirit. Preaching the gospel to all nations, all ethnos, all nations. Yeah, and if you read in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, it says that gospel that Jesus told them to go preach was being preached all throughout the world back then. Yeah, exactly. All Prove my point. World. Prove all my point. So, so the end was near according to the Bible. I'm not necessarily, no, because it hasn't been preached to every corner of the earth. For example, the Sentinel tribe in, in Africa, I think that's Africa or just further up, yeah. They themselves don't know, still don't know the gospel, so it hasn't been preached in all the areas. Well, I don't believe the gospel has been preached for a long time. The gospel is not Jesus died for your sins. Um, yes, it is. No, Jesus not. did die for our sins. The he said he would die for no, our no, sins. No, no, that's, that's not the gospel. That's one bit. One yeah, bit. I, I know, right? Oh, yeah, if you read right. 1 Corinthians 15, for example, Jesus, the, the gospel is Jesus rose from the dead. No, he died. He was, rose, he was born of a virgin. He rose from the dead, and he was, so he was gospel, buried on the third day. The gospel is the kingdom of God. Is the good news of the kingdom. Yeah, the good news as well. Right, okay. But in lieu of what Jesus well. is. In no, lieu no, no. Because if, if, you, if you're going to take Paul Jesus out of context, bro, then you're going to be rejecting what Paul says, you're going to reject the no, early Jesus church. Jesus went around preaching the good news of the kingdom. Yeah, I understand right? it. That was talking about the kingdom of God, right? Which is not, not talking about Jesus' death and resurrection. Burial, 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 burial. That's talking about the state of being, the state of man, which is they're supposed to be in, in a state of the kingdom of God being inside of you, the state of joy, peace, love righteousness this is what i'm saying when i said i was that love i was that joy and i was that peace so do you and believe that do you believe that paul was guided by the holy spirit as he says he was because the peter says that he had the holy spirit and, and paul says himself he has the spirit in, in romans 7 because one no one corinthians 7. yeah but paul didn't believe just that, 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 that jesus dying on the cross jesus dying on the cross was the main part of the gospel no but, I mean, no, but the way he describes the gospel is this, right? And he, and he explains it and he says, my gospel. Remember, he says, my gospel. People were believing my gospel. He was the one who was supposed to go and preach to the Gentiles. Actually, it was actually no, no, no. Peter who was to preach to the Gentiles. 
No, no, Peter wasn't always preached to Gentiles. Do you want me to go through it? It says in the book of Acts. No, it doesn't say it in the book. One minute. One minute. Let's go to Galatians first of all. So first of all, it says this in Galatians 2. 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles but put privacy to those who are of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Do you know? Do you know what? Do you know? Do you know why I know so the gospel? Just... Do you know why I know the gospel? Okay, so this is verse seven, right? On the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, so who the uncircumcised? Uh, the Jews. No, the Jews are circumcised. Oh, sorry, yeah, right, yeah, the Gentiles, sorry. It was only for the Jews. Why would a Gentile go over there and bother them? What, what do you mean? It was, it, Jesus didn't say it was... Like, so Jesus himself was sent for the Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus himself, his ministry was for the, the nation of Israel. Yeah. But after that, he says to his disciples, therefore you go out preaching to all nations, oh, baptizing yeah, yeah, yeah. them in the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it's clear that Jesus himself wanted us to go out and to preach to all nations and he wanted his apostles to preach to all nations right so in lieu of that fact right you can't then say that jesus himself jesus himself his ministry is securely based solely upon israel no it wasn't because of what he says oh, no, it wasn't. yes it was the gentiles and that's what and that basically like what happens what happens in acts and what happens in galatians as well is that Peter and Paul are split into two groups. One is for the uncircumcised, one is for the circumcised. Yeah, you're saying Peter is for the Jews. Right, no. Uh, the circumcised. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying Peter's for the Jews. But Paul's the Bible for the says he was for the Gentiles. No, no. Right, right, right. right. Let, let, get, say, say, the, say the verse again, because say, I think no, I've already explained type it. In, type in, um, um, the Gentiles shall hear the gospel by my mouth. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago, this is New International Version, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of, of the gospel and believe. Right. Right. So, How does that prove that, that he himself, Peter, was for the Gentiles? Because they just said it. The good Gentiles will hear the gospel through me. But what was, what was Peter doing for that? Remember when he says, when he stands before a, a load of people, Jews, Gentiles, a bunch of people, and says, men and brethren, these people are not drunk. Remember, like, the, the, the other apostles are there, like, they're speaking in other tongues. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning of Acts, mm -hmm. right? He's there preaching, and then a ton of people are saved, right? Does that mean his ministry was for, was, was for the Gentiles or for the Jews? Does that, that, no, does that mean his ministry wasn't for the Jews? No. Of course not. But he was still for the Gentiles as well. No, but what, 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 is, what is stated here is that Paul himself says that the ministry he had was solely for the Jews. That doesn't mean his preaching wouldn't gather the attention of Gentiles. Mm, I don't know if it means that. What, what do you mean? We're in an open space. We're talking about um, the Mediterranean. We're talking about a place where there'll be a bunch of people gathered. If, 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 let's say, like, we're at, let's say if, we're at if, a I think, um, I just think if Paul, synagogue, for example. I just think if Peter says the Gentiles will hear the, hear the gospel by his mouth, right, but that means his ministry was still for the Gentiles. But let's say we're at a synagogue, for example, and there's a ton of Gentiles there, just outside the synagogue, for whatever reason, right? And, and, and Peter is preaching before the people at the synagogue, right? If they overhear that, Will they, will they, is it possible that they will become, they will come to saving faith? Yeah. So right. So by his, by his preaching, the Gentiles will come to saving faith. It's not a problem for us because he's still preaching to and the that Jews. It could be with any, any, with any Gentiles, could, thing, couldn't it? That could mean with any believer that they could hear a Gentile could come to faith. But Peter specifically said him. <sighs> I, don't, I don't think you're getting what I'm saying. Honestly, God. I, don't, I, don't I understand think. what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Because it, it, it doesn't make sense in context unless you want to buy this contradiction. Well, I don't think it's contradiction. I think there is context. The context, the way I've explained it, makes more sense. They've basically heard him, and in lieu of hearing him, they've decided to come to faith. That doesn't mean his ministry was solely for the Jews. For example, as I said before, Jesus' ministry was for the Israelites. But people who are non Israelites, like the centurion, was an Israelite, and the Syrophoenician woman, that he called a little puppy, was an Israelite. But they came to save in faith because of what he's preaching. Mm. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah, it could mean that, I don't know. So, but, but anyway, I want, I want to leave with this because time's getting on. But right. Because this is the problem. If, if you're going to remain a Unitarian, right, mm. you have to deal ultimately with what this passage says. Because this passage is not, not just claiming that, this is a pre, that Jesus was a pre-informed plan. Come on. Uh. Galatians, sorry. So this is Titus 2.13. It says here, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing 
of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ. Now Titus is with the apostles, so you can't argue that he's a church father. He's calling In Jesus other, God. In other versions it says our God, comma, and our Saviour Jesus Christ. There's a difference there. Right, but who's, who's he talking to? In, in talking about God, trying to wait for God and Jesus to turn up. Right, but, but hold on. Let's, let's read the context, right? Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, and I'll go into the Greek, right? Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of our God, of God our Savior in all things. Remember, God says there's no Savior besides me. And why was Jesus made a Savior then? C can, can I continue? Because <laughs> you, what you're doing is you're then reading your own scripts into what I'm that's saying. That's what the Bible says. The but, no, made, no, that's what your he script says. He was made Lord says. and Saviour. Uh, no, no, he's... He, made, sorry, sorry. He was made a prince and a saviour. Where does it say that? Because now, now we have to... Acts, but this is what I mean. You're going to the book of Acts. Now, let's stick with Titus. Let's stick with what, the context of what Titus is saying rather than running to Acts. Because what you're going to do is if I go to Acts, then you're going to run to John. If I go to John, right, you're going to run to Matthew. Let's if I run to... This right, is what I mean. We, I we, promise I won't run to anything. Let's just go to Acts and look at the verse where it says he was made a prince and a saviour. Okay. I don't know what the verse was. What the verse? You'll have to look at it fine online. Well, I could, I, that's the thing. All I need to do is go to Acts 2 to show you that if he was made a, a prince and saviour, then there's a problem for me, for you, not me. But listen to this, yeah? So that you, you, you're saying is, because I, I know he's one of the verses you bring up. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom he crucified, both Lord and Christ. There you go. Right. There you go. That's not a problem for us. Did you read That's this? That's an That's an option. Um, no. It was made Lord read, and Christ. Here it is. All right. That was when he said, that is when. Here it is. That, one second. That was when that verse is said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a person. Right. There is when it said it, not right. before. But you understand, right, that our verses in Lewin, whoever he was, I said, Philippians 2, 6 to 11 says he was made lower than the angels. Right. So he's made lower than the angels. He was he was in his incarnate state. So he didn't he wouldn't have access to that that deity or access to parts of that deity he would have had when he was in human nature. But let, let's go on, right? This is what it says in Philippians, I think this is free. Okay, so this is what it says, free Acts 3.15. So if you're going to say that Jesus is God, then you've got a lot of problems with this one. But you denied the Holy One and the just. So this is talking about Jesus Christ. Let me read before that so that you can always talk about Jesus Christ. Right? So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people. This is Acts 3.12. Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us? As though by our own power or godliness, we have made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One, the just and arch for murderer to be granted you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are, to, we are witnesses. Mm -hmm. So not only does it say here that, the, that Jesus is the Prince of Life, which is a divine title, because only God can give life according to the Bible, right? Because the, because the word dwelling in Christ doesn't say that in the, in the verse. Hold on. But hold on, you, you, you God, said to me, word was we won't go anywhere else. God's Holy Spirit, which is the word, God's Holy Spirit was was in Christ. The, and Who said the word was the Holy Spirit? You said that, Who said that? Said, I told you, the, 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 the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. Where does it say so that? When the, when, so when the Spirit does it, is, is in action. No, no, where does it say that though? Paul says it. But where does he say that? Uh, I can't remember. Left hand, right hand. Okay, so, so obviously he says it in one of his letters. But I'm reading Acts right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what you're telling me is that even though I went to the verse, as I said, as I prophetically claimed that you would, every time I go to a verse, you run to another one. No, so deny I, that Jesus no. is a prince of life. Because what you're doing, bro, is you're reading into the Bible a context that you've made up. I'm not doing that. I'm not what, what I'm not doing is reading into the Bible the context I've made yes, up. I'm going I'm to the verse. The, I'm giving you and I'm the reading context what it says. of what it means to be the, the prince of life. Hold the on, prince but, of life. But you can't look, hold on, hold on. We're at Acts right now. Do you, do you, do, would you agree that Acts was written before Paul's letters? Yeah. So you believe that? Yeah. Right. So this is more recent. This is more theologically recent, right? Than okay, Paul's yeah, letters. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So contextually, this will be about the time where the, where, the, where the, the beginnings of the church ministry are happening, right? Mm. So explain here why why Paul Peter, sorry Peter, says and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. Why does Peter say that? I told you. Because the word, the word, the word of eternal life was in Christ. God, God, God made the word of eternal life to be in Christ. God ordained it. The, doesn't, the Bible doesn't say God ordained it to be in Christ. That doesn't say that. 
And in fact, this verse even destroys you in faith because what you look what it says, whom God raised from the dead. Right, who raised God? Who, who raised Jesus? The Father. Okay, then let's go to John 3, all right? This is before Acts, so you can't complain. John 3, and this is an, this is an apostle speaking. Okay, so John, John, 2, John 2 says this, all right? Jesus answered and said unto him, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Yeah. Then the Jews said it was taken 46 years to build this temple. And will you raise it up in three days? But, and John adds, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. Mm. Jesus said he would raise himself. Yeah, because he was but given... But Acts in, says that God raised him up. Yes, because, it, it, because ultimately God gave power and authority for Jesus to raise his own body. God gave... But hold on, you said that Jesus... You, you claim that Jesus is a creator being. Yeah. So how is, he give, how is God giving a creator being the ability to raise his own body up? Why and by the way, the Bible doesn't say that either. He doesn't need to say exactly that. The Bible doesn't say a lot of things that you say, but you... you um, I, all I've done is read the Bible to you, bro. And, and, and I'll just end it on this, because I, I, I honestly don't know why I'm even singing, but I, I'll end it on this, right? Just to completely demolish any more of these stupid Unitarian arguments that don't make any sense. But John 40, verse 40, 41, right? John 12, sorry. Verse, I'll, I'll read from 39, right? Therefore, all right, let's, let's read before that so you know who is speaking about well, while you have light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. But although he had done so many signs, amen. Without Jesus. But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him. This is John speaking. That the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report? I don't know why you're saying that about the Bible, bro. I mean, this is the Lord's word. Lord, who has believed our report? That Isaiah spoke of is in Isaiah yeah, you know, 6, you know, and that glory you know, you know, is God yeah. Yahweh sitting on the phone. Yeah, and you, you can't deny you know, Yahweh because know, it's literally in the verse the tetragrammaton is Yahweh, you know the you divine already, name for God. And God and Isaiah sees God on the throne. You already had this discussion with Peter. Um, it, it's irrelevant. I'm, I'm reading to you what it says. Okay, and he described it to you what the meaning is. No, he didn't. Because I, I saw it on the videos. Are you telling me you can't describe the meaning to me? Is that what you're saying? I, I can't. I can't. Describe, I'm not very good at describing that. Bit. No, no, because you can't add to it. What you're telling me is you want to add to the Bible things that aren't there. No, and no. I'm saying that the Bible is saying that Jesus was that divine figure sitting on the throne, that Yahweh. So deal with it. Either that, or you just become a Trinitarian. But, I can't deal with it, no, I can't deal with it. But if you can't deal with it, bro, then I suggest you learn about it. Because unfortunately, what I think you're doing, and I'm not trying to be like insulting on it. If I can't deal with something, I'll, I'll say I can't deal with it. Fair enough, gonna, and that's a humble position. I'm right? not just going to make up a load of bull. What I'm saying is this, yeah, if, if, if you honestly can't deal with that passage, what I, was, what I say is look it up, research it. Research what earlier Christians think. Unfortunately, you seem to think that the church went dead after the first century, which is, is no way compatible with what Jesus says when he said he will guide the church all truth. Right? And if, if the Holy Spirit is in the same the same people as the apostles in the same apostles that built the churches, then of course there'll be in the believers who'll be taught the same things. Okay, if if the church is still alive today, then how comes the church never and I've been to many churches now that and, and listened to the message of Christ and everything, I have never ever ever heard the church go beyond talking about faith. Ever. Never. What do you mean by going beyond talking Talk about, about faith? All they do every week is talk about different ways about you're supposed to have faith in Christ and, and faith in God raising from the dead. Well, first, have you been to every church? Yes, I've been to a lot of no, no, So you've been to have you been to the Coptic church, sorry, the, the, sorry, the Catholic church, churches, no, the Eastern been, Orthodox churches? I've been to many churches. Have you been to Lutheran churches? Have you been to no, Anglican no, no, churches? No, no, I haven't, no, no. So again, you don't you haven't been to every church to know that. No, but I've been to a lot of churches. But that's irrelevant. Saying you've been to a lot of churches, you've probably been to a lot of Protestant churches, and I don't know which ones you've been to. For, ex for example, you could have gone to Unitarian churches, who, by the way, are teaching heretical doctrine. No, I haven't been to Unitarian churches. So you're saying you go to Trinitarian churches, but you don't believe in a Trinitarian God? No, I, I, I just I, I go to them to have a bit of fellowship, and I, and I hope that I hear a good message. So you go to churches with people who don't believe in the same God as you? Yeah, what's wrong with that? So you might as well be a Muslim then, because you might as well go to a mosque and pray before Allah. Yeah. If, if you're going to do that. Either that or you become a Trinitarian. I'm just saying, look, John 12 is clear that Jesus was that divine figure sitting on the throne. And that divine figure is Yahweh. You can't deny it.
as much as you want to read into it like Peter does, you cannot, you cannot deny what John is saying in that verse. And John is an apostle. He's a disciple of Jesus Christ. He's not a first century church father. I'll have to have a look. I'll have to have a look at that. Fair enough. But anyway, <laughs> I'll leave you to it. I mean, this is all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all recorded. We're just doing it. Coming up. <laughs> no, seriously, though, what church do you go to? I go visit churches. You, don't, you visit churches? Yeah, I don't have a home. Oh, fair enough. Unitarians don't have a home. Of course they don't, because their church was founded in the 18th century. Well, well technically, in, in, you could argue the 3rd century with, with Arius. By the way, Arius was a heretic. And he was condemned by Athanasius. And most of the church. If you look at the church history, bro, you'd actually be amazed at how wrong the Arian doctrine is. Uh, but what I would call you to is a, a, the Christian God, who is diverse, who is a multiple person, who isn't just limited by our own thoughts. As Jesus, as God says, he's unlike God. our thoughts and by unlike the, our ways. By the thousands of verses which talk about God being one person. It doesn't say one person. Is this the Father alone? John 17, 3. Yeah, John 73 doesn't say the Father alone is one. Yes, it does. It no, it, no, it doesn't. It, it uses Granfield Shark Rule. Granfield Shark Rule is a, the chi that connects the two, two parties. So when it says um, the only. Lord, when it says the only God and Jesus Christ, the chi connects the two nouns. No, that doesn't make him God. That does because he's, the, the, the writer's claiming that both these parties are good. No, it doesn't. But no, the writer's not saying that. Yes, he's he is. eternal life to know you, the only true God. He's using, uh, John is using Granville Sharp's rule. Granville Sharp's rule is this. The Kai, using and, the, and by the way in Greek is Kai, right? The Kai used there means and also Jesus. Also Jesus. Is that what they're, how they're interpreting it? Well, yes, the Kai is connected okay, that's to how now. They've got their Trinitarian bias. Okay. That's not a but Trinitarian the, but, bias. But Jesus has made, made it very clear. It's called Greek. It's not, <laughs> it's not called Trinitarian bias. And if you're going to say that, bro, then you might as well reject the Bible. You know why? Because majority of the church fathers from, from the earliest century of Christian history all the way up until now, they're the ones that preserve the Bible you're reading. So you might as well say that the Bible is a Trinitarian bias. If you're going to do that, you might as well just leave Christianity. Or you might as well submit that the Trinitarian the tri doctrine is true doctrine. Because how can you claim that the Bible you have now, which by the way was handed down by the Catholic Church, I don't know if you know that. Yeah, I know. Right. So, so and, and I know, and I know that this Bible that we have now was, was written in the fourth century. Um, well, it was written way before the fourth century. I don't know that. We have we have copies from the John Ryland's library. We have a manuscript from John Ryland's library that's dated about 250 AD. Oh, maybe then. I don't know. But, but which, which, which bit of the Bible? Well, it's, was it, it's, it's about I think it's John 18. Just a couple of. Well, a couple of verses, John 18, and a couple of verses from John 6, I so think. Why don't we have any manuscripts from before the 4th century? Because papyrus damages. You're talking about hundreds of years and, and a poor Christian community. They didn't have, like, animal skins and stuff to, like, preserve it on. Not until later. That's why you get the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus and other copies, like, lasting for as long as they did. It's not even just that. It's a, you know, it's not even just that. It's the fact that the Trinitarian Church has not had a good history. What do you mean it's not had a good history? Well, it's killed everybody that disagreed with them. Well, that's not the case for the Trinitarian church history. For example, like, the, the, the Catholics are not the only Trinitarians. Protestants killed a lot of people as well. Right, well after the Reformation, but they were killed. And before that, right, we have the, for example, during the schism, have you heard of the 10th century schism? No. Right, there was a schism between the Catholic church and the Orthodox church in the 10th century, right? The Orthodox church believed in the Trinity, by the way, right? They themselves were attacked by the, by the Catholics. They were killed by the Catholics. A lot of them were killed in the Byzant in, in Byzantine, in, in the in the church in, Byz in Byzantium. Mm. Right, in Byzantium. Sorry. So they, they were attacked and killed, right, by that church. But they themselves believed in the Trinity. So claiming that there were some certain instances of bad people in the church doesn't negate the Trinity. It only, negate, it only says that there's certain people in the church that are bad. And and again, you are technically a Protestant. Your 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 theology comes from areas who, who, who later the Puritans copied. The Puritans in the 18th century, who are, who are Protestants, mm. who turned to their, well, some of them turned to heretics, their religion comes out of that. So their Unitarian comes out of that idea of the early church, um, no, the, the, of the Arius doctrine, basically. Yeah. Because they, they believe that we have to go back to the purity of God's one person. The problem is, God never identifies himself in the Bible as one person, ever. I disagree. Well, you have to prove it, man. <laughs> or you can submit and become a Trinitarian. 
Submit to the true church, bro. There's vote. Are you trying to rush me again? Okay, well, anyway. You're not Christian yet, bro. You're not Christian yet, bro. I hope the Lord, I hope the Lord illuminates your heart to the truth of his Christ and the Holy Spirit.